Welcome to Intuitive Cat. So, as you can see, I'm not doing well still. I do have a bit of a voice back, which is good. Um, it's been a very rough week. Um, still antibiotics, still steroids. Nothing is going very well. They did x-rays. I haven't gotten the results. But I've had pneumonia before, and this is definitely worse than that time. Um, so I have been getting information about how there's been a lot of people that haven't been feeling very well physically, spiritually, emotionally. In the last year or so, more people, um, you know, not just people like myself with immune system issues, but more people than usual have been getting like the flu or there's been a lot of listeria or E. coli breakouts. There's been um, a lot more of these uh, super bugs that are resistant to the antibiotic, uh, antibiotics, largely due because of the overuse of antibiotics within livestock. So we are now at a point where um, it's not just, you know, more people are getting the flu than usual, or it's, you know, been a bad couple of years for allergies, especially people that have lived in this city in Texas, people have lived their entire lives, never had a problem with allergies. And now the last two years, we've had record breaking levels and people that normally aren't bothered are, are affected. Um, all of this has been curious. So they have been sharing with me, um, again, in previous videos, they have mentioned about there being a new millennium for humankind, a new um, evolution. And we're going through a time period where there will be like a little bit, that veil between the worlds will be lifted a bit. Not that we're going to kind of walk between all the time, but that we'll be at a higher vibration. We'll be in a place that has more peace and less war. We'll be um, in a place that supports, you know, countries are more focused on supporting its most vulnerable senior citizens, children, um, people that are um, having issues with regard to uh, systemic lifelong issues with incarceration and with um, treating minorities differently and how people are marginalized and not valued and, and how one small group of people, you know, dictates everything for the rest of the world. All of these issues that have been prevalent for generations um, have been like a big uh, sore have been brought to the surface and before we would, I, I know myself, I would just say, well, I'm one person, what can I do to fix corruption in Washington? I can't, and I'd feel hopeless, and I just want to give up. Now more and more people not only recognize it, but are getting involved. And this is creating the, we're now seeing under the surface, we all knew that it was going on. We knew there was corruption, we knew that lobbyists you know, gave money to politicians, both sides. I'm not saying this is just the Republican Party, but the, and it's just not just the U.S., around the world, a very small minority, 1% of the 1%, have dictated how countries are run and how banks are run and how medicine and treatment and prisons and, and everything in between. Um, and it has very specifically marginalized minorities and marginalized the most vulnerable and it has um, really brought a generational change, generational damage to millions of people um, because of the rising awareness of this. And people were aware, but they just felt hopeless or like, I can't do anything. What am I going to do about it? That's just how way it is. I'm going to vote for the least worst option and and try to move on. Now, when we're talking about it, we aren't just going, I can't do anything, I'll leave it alone. We are saying, I won't put up with it. That's great. This is good. But also, we are letting it um, kind of take over. We have gotten to a point where, because all this is brought to the surface, because more and more journalists are bringing out, um, you know, like the systemic, systemic issues that, that have been there, and that we are becoming more, uh, as, a, as a community, as a whole, our country and the world, that we are more 
um, in tune to wanting to hold our representatives um, accountable and that we want to see justice and we're not going to put up with it anymore, that this is um, creating an issue with regard to, yes, it's good to be informed and it's excellent to want to participate toward a better world. But we're just, with this 24-hour news media circus that feeds on all the worst news, it is a machine that creates fear. And when people are under that mindset of fear, then they're more easily um, manipulated or controlled or they're more easily going to focus on these small fights between the neighbor and themselves versus combining with the neighbor and focusing on on who should be the real target. And I really noticed a lot. It's been very painful for me this past week, especially to see that people that I I like and people that I think are fine that I don't know anything about, but I might see some comments and people that agree on a lot of stuff will sit there and pick at each other about one or two like minor aspects of the topic. And it's like, why are we, we're already um, previously in, in a reading, my guide showed me this image of someone with all their nerves are on the outside. So instead of skin and underneath is the nerves, that it's outside up, inside out, so that all the nerves are on the outside. And this idea that, that we're so overstimulated and that our nerves are so raw and like our whole body, all our nerves being exposed are on fire and we're just, we're in so much pain, but it's also just, we can't think because that's all, we're focused on the fact that we're in so much pain and we're so upset, and we see these injustices, and it's very upsetting, and we see the, how it affects us or how it affects people that we care about, and then we read about how it affects others. We build this up within ourselves, and then we're short-tempered, of course. We, we can't stay in this meditative, you know, calm mind when we're exposing ourselves to the news or to more information or we got news from a doctor or we got bad news from work it's it's creating a very large issue where now it's not only that people have become more susceptible to, to illness or allergies or or things like that which is part of this evolution but that also that we are good honest good wonderful people are being distracted and in a way, their um, kind of worst instincts take over because they're overtaxed, they're overstressed. <clears throat> Pardon me. And when you're overstressed, when you, you know, just came home from working 12, 13 hour days and the kids are screaming and the dog has to go out and your husband's asked, like, what, what happened with this? And you can't take it. You just reach your limit. We all have that. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with having, you know, feeling overwhelmed and just needing to, to find some peace or something. But what I'm seeing, which has been discouraging this week, um, is that we're so ready to just be on the defensive or even on the attack. And it's just about, oh no, I don't agree with that thing you said, but we all agree on all of this other information, but we have to pick apart this or pick apart that. And it's really upsetting to watch. Now I'm, um, I, d I know that every single one who watches this channel has been amazing and supportive of everyone else in the comments. You guys have great, you know, talk with each other, which I encourage and I very much appreciate. I am just seeing that we as a country and we as a world have been so stressed out that we're now lashing out at people that we shouldn't and that we're doing things that might not be indicative of who we are. Um, and I, the information that they've been giving me about physical illnesses and stress and this kind of feeling into overwhelm and, and potentially, you know, emotional stuff coming up to the surface, that all of this, we're going through this larger evolution to get to a higher vibrational energy or to a higher level where we're more 
more people are awakening to the spiritual side and more people than ever are tuning in to, you know, maybe a second career path. They no longer want to work a nine to five in an office. They want to do something that means something that can help people. More and more people are discovering that they have intuitive talents or psychic or kind of, you know, clairsentient or maybe even just gut instincts that they're learning about themselves, that they have some ability of these kinds. <clears throat> more and more people are wanting to feel like there's a purpose in their life, not just working at a bank, coming home and, you know, feeding the kids, that they want to do something that will help community, that will help the world do something that means something more and it's this spiritual enlightenment and this human evolution that we're going through and it's about growing pains whenever like when you see a three-year-old who within a year goes up four sizes there they have like leg cramps they have aches and it hurts to grow that fast <clears throat> for me and it's part of how we're going to get to this next level. And this next level is going to be amazing and beautiful, as they, as they say. But right now, because there's so much that we're now, our eyes are now awakened, like the film has been pulled off our eyes, and now we can see all that's been going on for millennia. And it's upsetting. Of course it is. But because we are now aware of it, because it's upsetting, then we end up not being the um, best version of ourselves, which is normal. What they're suggesting is that A, that we limit our intake of you know news, to turn off the TV, to shut, don't get the Apple news alerts or whatever, your phone news alerts, just limit. Um, years ago, I saw a therapist and she told me to stop watching the news. And I'm like, what are you talking about? My grandparents, every day, my grandma would read the paper front to back. We'd watch the news at six and at eight. Like we always knew what was going on. My grandmother was very informed. And a therapist told me like, it's not helping you. I PTSD, it's not helping you. And I said, but like, I have to stay informed. Like, what are you talking about? This is insane, obscene. She said, if something is going on, you will hear about it. She was right. For that time period, for almost a decade, I stopped watching all news. I didn't watch the news on the TV. I didn't go out. And at this time, I wasn't really on the line a lot, so I wasn't reading any kind of um, news websites or anything. And I didn't get any newspapers. When you go to the grocery, you would hear people talk about big events, you know, 9-11 or the tsunami um, in uh, Indonesia, you would hear big events just because they're big events. Everyone's talking about them. I did a lot of emotional work on myself. There was a time period in my life where I had to kind of reinvent, figure out who I was and work on a lot. And it was fascinating to me that I didn't miss not seeing or watching or reading any news. And I was amazed to realize that you can still be informed without um, um, putting yourself in a place where you're um, inviting something to upset you. <clears throat> I'm not saying that we should all turn away and forget the world's problems. That's not gonna solve anything. But we already know that we feel very strongly that things are unjust and they are. We feel very strongly that things should be done and they will be. We definitely should and do and should communicate with our representatives and that's their job and we should do in what ways that we can, we should do what we can. But we have to be careful not to overstimulate ourselves with things. It's once you hear a topic, watching four or five videos on it or reading two or three articles, that's not gonna help you solve that. Um, and I've done this myself. Um, so we need, as they have been suggesting, during this time when all our nerves are on the outside and we're already going through growing pains and our spiritual self is waking up to see these um, disparities between people and how things are run and 
more cognitive of, of what's going on and how people have been treated for millennia. And we want to fix now. We want it. We want it yesterday. We want Trump to go to jail yesterday. We want all the corruption and government done yesterday. Um, time, universal time, time to them is not the same as time for us. It's like for us, it can't come fast enough. And with, with Barr's summary, um, which wasn't a summary, with Barr's memo, a lot of people were very upset, understandably. And then a lot of people that were supportive of Trump felt vindicated. And this led to those who felt vindicated lashing back at people who had said Trump was all these things and more. And the people that felt that Barr had done a misjustice by minimizing or even, you know, erasing things that might have gone on, um, that that felt even more of like, no, and now I have to be even louder to say I know there's something wrong. And it's not, we're talking to each other, but we're not actually getting anything done because it's there's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in one of her, um, I'm not sure, it was like a, she went somewhere to talk to a group of people and someone yelled out at her about something and she said this, between you and me, this isn't how it's going to get fixed. This needs to be we between us and them. And so we can disagree and that's fine. I would hope that we would be respectful when we disagree and I've seen that on this channel and I'm very glad. But we also have to know that when we get overburdened and stressed, we have to make sure that we're putting that energy in the right direction and that people, neighbors fighting amongst each other and people that are lashing out at other people on um, websites or in comments or whatever that this they agree on all this other stuff, but they're focusing on the one thing that they might not agree about. That's not solving the problem. Talking to that person in a not so nice way isn't actually getting it to the, how it could be solved. Reaching out to representatives sometimes feels like we're just throwing energy into a trash basket, but it does matter. Even though we feel like they might not care, um, when they do have to go to a vote, they have to go to sleep at night knowing that they received 100,000 emails, faxes, letters, calls, etc. And yet they still did something that they have to go home and, and take um, criticism for doing what they did and not representing their constituents. There is a um, text messaging kind of thing that I use. I found it very good because it can be very stressful to go to like the congress.gov or whatever and look up everyone and try to write a separate letter to every person that is your representative, et cetera. So there's this text messaging service. <clears throat> it doesn't cost anything, but your, if your phone has fines with, with any text, then it might, but it itself is free. It's called ResistBot <clears throat> and you would text, um, you would text RESIST, R-E-S-I-S-T, to number 50409. First, it will ask your name and your zip code. Then it'll give you your first state representatives. After you do like one letter, you just type it out in the text. I do it in email so I can edit it, and then I put it in the text. And then after you do one letter or something, then they'll open it up and they'll give you your federal representatives. So I have two House and, and one and one Senate. <clears throat> um, I have Cruz and McCall and um, Corbin, <laughs> wonderful pillars of society. But um, regardless, so what you can do with this service, resist, resist bot is what it's called, but it's through text messaging. They might have a website. But you just write your letter and you send it through text and they will automatically add a header and footer. They will automatically enter your information to prove that you're a constituent because some um, congressmen don't accept letters that aren't from their constituents. And it'll take your, your text, put it into a lettered format and fax it to the appropriate, all of the appropriate representatives. So by one text message, you're sending it to everyone that would be um, 
you're communicating to everyone that you can by just sending one text message and it'll automatically format it for you. You don't have to add like your name and your, you know, content. You don't, you don't have to add anything. Just text your message, say vote this way or that, or I don't like what you did. And it'll automatically put it into professional letter format and it'll fax it to the company. Um, this to me has helped because when I feel upset and hopeless or discouraged and I go trying to find all my representatives and I get lost in this thing where I'm on every single one of their websites and I'm contacting every single one of them and I spend five hours and trying to, you know, these long emails that I know they probably don't even, uh, that the, the person themselves is probably has read the first one or two paragraphs at most. And then I get more discouraged. So having this service has helped me know that A, that I did check it off my list. I did something about it. I spoke up about it. But B, it makes sure that I don't stay in that place of, of, of upset and, and fear and agitation. And um, it's a good way for me to just mentally do, I said something about it and I spoke my voice. Now I need to move on to something else. So I don't stay in this uncomfortable mental space. <clears throat> so what they've been saying this past week is that we need to, A, we need to get out of this perpetual f fear feeding machine, which uh, all news is, it's, all news is now 24 hour news. And the only news that sells, you know, is what bleeds. It's not healthy, happy, uplifting stuff. Um, we need to find things that um, we enjoy, hobbies, uh, reading, going outside, going for a walk. Um, something like a walk can help with all the adrenaline that builds up when we have all the serotonin and endorphin and dopamine that's running and coursing through our system. <clears throat> it's not physically healthy for us to be in this state and it's not emotionally healthy and it's not good for ourselves. It's not good for those around us. And it's not um, productive when we're, you know, I believe that most of us here can agree that Fox News, who does not represent itself as a news program, it represents itself as an entertainment program, they focus on fear mongering. The more that they can scare the viewers, the more docile the viewers are, and they've proven in, with science that the more easily you're misled, the more easily you're manipulated and they can get a large amount of people to do things that they might not normally would have because they started this um, <clears throat> dialogue or story of what to be scared of. And this whole caravan is coming to get you. There's, there's no caravan. There's people that are running from being killed or raped or murdered. They're not coming here to get us. They want, as any of us, they want to live in a place that's safe. They want to work. They want to contribute. They want to be a part of a larger whole. A lot of them would love to live back home, but it's literally life and death for them. So they're not here to take something. They're not a caravan. They're not like wandering gypsies. These people are running for their life. And all they want to do is be able to contribute. They don't want to be lazy. They don't want to sit back and watch TV and collect money. That's not, you wouldn't walk thousands of miles if you wanted that. Uh, so this whole idea of how Fox News is an example of how they take a small amount of information and turn it into an entire narrative in order to keep people in the mindset of fear. And when you're in the mindset of fear, then you are more likely to follow if they want to go to war, like with Bush Jr. You're, they kept it at red and orange and red um, threat levels. And the more troops they would send, it's like you're not um, you're not an American if you don't believe in the troops kind of thing. I was married to a sailor Navy, and I every single generation of my family has been in the military, and I'm very much for people that uh, offer their life to help other people. But the military defense department does not support these men and women. They take all the money and they put it into guns and ammo, et cetera. And then the people, after they've been traumatized or whatever they've seen or witnessed, are dropped off at the sidewalk and 
said, here's the name number for the VA. There's no, um, there's not, it's the military and defense departments are not for the soldiers or for those that volunteer or enlist. It's for Lockheed Martin and all this. And it's very easy to get discouraged when you see everything like this that's going on. And it's permeated every single division of society in almost every country at this point. But it doesn't do good right now for me to go, oh my God, Lockheed Martin has to go, do do you know, go down and Boeing has to go down. It's not helpful for me to focus on that topic right now, to focus on the PTSD that I myself have experienced and therefore that I can understand would it come from someone that's seen much worse than I. What I can do is I can focus on, you know, I, I pray. Um, if you don't believe in God, that's fine. Maybe you meditate. Maybe you do some yoga or exercise or maybe you take a walk. Um, I personally, uh, my mom and I have decided for the last few months at three o'clock her time Eastern, we will call each other every single day and pray. And it's like, not only am I just lifting what I'm worrying about or <clears throat> praying for something and I always include to ask for um, God or spirit source to work within the hearts and minds of those in positions of leadership and power around the world. And I ask for everyone in the world to have a roof over their head, a safe place to live, a warm bed, food in their belly and clean water. <clears throat> those are all, every, since I was a kid, that's what I've always prayed for. But then I also list up, lift up everyone that watches this channel I lift up those that I've met in life or online that are, I know are going through things. Um, I lift up my own struggles and what I'm dealing with. And just by saying it, not even aloud, but because I've been sharing it with my mom, just by saying it, it's like, okay, I have too much on my plate. This is overwhelming and it's getting me upset and I can't do anything about it right now. I can't fix it right now. <clears throat> So it's not helping me to ruminate on it. So by lifting it up to a higher source and by saying, I need help with this, and I have to call on Archangel Michael, I call on Archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Ariel. I call on my grandparents, my spirit guides, my guardian angels, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Mary. Um, I call on uh, uh, everybody <laughs> I can think of. And because of that, I feel like, again, there's a larger energy in this, you know, universal energy that can, when you, or Mother Earth even, if you pour out something that to you is no good, like say you have manure from a horse farm, <laughs> Mother Earth can turn that manure into fertilizer and can turn it into helping plants grow. So the universe can take something that we see as negative and can turn it into something that's prosperous. <clears throat> so, it's going to be about self-care right now. It's going to be about managing our expectations. Uh, if, for example, let's just say this. They've mentioned this. If Trump were to go to prison tomorrow, we would feel good for maybe a day or two. But then what? what what's fixed? Yes, he, he went to prison. Um, are our schools fixed? Is our EPA director not, you know, gonna gonna get back to, to fixing the environment? Uh, is our government gonna be fixed? Is the corruption gonna be gone? Um, is is the the judges that were seated that that have horrible histories um, are are they gonna be gone? It's we can't wait for X to happen before we feel better. <clears throat> And their time, again, that they're reminding me, the time in the universe is not time to us. We want it all done yesterday because now that we see it, it's overwhelming and we're emotionally distraught and we want a resolution yesterday, which is understandable. There's a lot of moving parts and they've shown me, of course, we've mentioned this, that with Mueller's investigation, there's a lot of other not just indictments, but a lot of other cases and investigations. <clears throat> there will be an unredacted version given to the Gang of Eight. 
their um, justice and intelligence committees within the Senate and the House both will get a very lightly redacted version because there are bad actors in some of these committees. But the, I believe the justice and the intelligence committees within Senate and House have the highest um, secret level clearance or whatever it is, <clears throat> as well as the military and foreign affairs. I'm not sure exactly. So because there are some bad actors within those committees, like Republican side, especially in the Senate, like Lindsey Graham, they could take that unredacted version of Mueller's report and screw with some of what's still going on investigation-wise, and or they could leak it to Trump or his people or anyone in order to prepare them for a defense. <clears throat> so the Gang of Eight will get an unredacted version, period. This is them. This is not me. This is what they're saying. <clears throat> the House and Senate Judiciary and... and um, I'm sorry, words, Judiciary and um, Intelligence Committees will get a very, very lightly redacted version of Mueller's report. <clears throat> the entire House and Senate will get a slightly more redacted version. Again, bad actors. The public will see the letters that Mueller's team prepared, that they prepared letters that were safe without any secret info that were safe for the public. We will see those. It's not going to be tomorrow, but we will see them. After the Senate and the House see what they do see, you know, in the committees as well as as a whole, there will be these um, testimonies, Mueller, Rosenstein, Barr, and a lot more people will be called to testify. The House is where it's going to play out. Again, in the last video, they mentioned on how if Mueller, um, say that Mueller was not only in charge of collecting this evidence, but he was in charge of, of um, deeming what should happen to everyone involved. If they besmirched Mueller's reputation, then they could take down all of the related investigations. Mueller, for his uh, integrity, for his um, what he has done throughout this entire investigation, is collect it and then give that evidence to the appropriate, you know, SDNY or um, Virginia or other um, state and federal jurisdictions. Mueller has never decided, he's not judge and jury and executioner. Mueller is just a police detective and he knows it. And he knows that um, that's supposed to be his role. His role is not to be detective, judge, jury, and executioner. Because then if you besmirch one person, you can take away everything and justice wouldn't be served. We've already seen justice, and in some ways, with, um, sorry, with Manafort, and there will be more coming for him. We've seen some with Cohen, there will be more coming for him. Uh, he will be giving more, as he mentioned, he found some more info on finances or something. Um, the uh, Papadopoulos, who's now asking for a pardon, we've seen some information on him. Mueller, by doing this, by handing it off to different state and other jurisdictions, that means that these, this information has already resulted in a lot of people going to jail and a lot of people being indicted and a lot of other crimes being proven. And also, not just crimes being proven, but trials for these crimes and, and convictions and sentencing for these crimes. <clears throat> There's already been fruit of this tree. Our issue is that we want everything yesterday because we're so upset, which they understand. Um, they're trying to say that we can't lose hope. We have to hold the faith and we have to make sure that we don't um, get ourselves so upset that, that we, we're like spinning, that we lose focus on, on what we should do for our own life. If we sit and, and just watch TV and we stop, living, then we're letting them take our life away. We're letting them take over our mind. We're letting them take over our, all of our actions. We're letting them upset us to the point that we're short-tempered with our friend or our spouse, our children, people online. Um, by allowing this to take up 90% of our headspace, which nor is and they're saying all of this is understandable there's nothing wrong it's just the way that 
is affecting us. They're trying to say this is, they're saying it's, there's a quote that I love and it's um, like some vengeance or, or something. It's like drinking the poison yourself and expecting the other person to die. When um, in my life, there have been some people that have done some very harmful things. And I went through therapy and I dealt with them. But if I were to still be holding them like, oh, how dare they? They did X, Y, and Z. And I would have just fully been able to say, yeah, they were wrong. They did do X, Y, and Z. And that wasn't correct. But if I'm still focusing on that and it's been 10 years, they aren't, they aren't receiving anything for the pain that I'm still putting myself through. <clears throat> because I have dealt with it in therapy and I found ways of forgiving the situation, forgiving the person, forgiving myself, um, trying to find ways of, of processing it, then I'm no longer ruminating on it and I'm no longer drinking the poison and expecting something to happen to them about it. <clears throat> so, um, lately I've been sewing and when I can, when I have energy, this has been months of work, but um, I've been trying to do crafts. I have, <clears throat> sorry, the microphone dropped. I know when I move this, it makes noise. I have been trying to crochet, but my arthritis is acting up. Um, I have been watching videos about kitty cats and dogs. I have been watching videos on how to you know, quilting and sewing and crochet. Um, I've been looking at pictures of all the quilt projects and crochet projects I want to make and different patterns for hand stitching while I'm bed bound or if I get the energy down the road, uh, what I want to sew on the machine. <clears throat> I've been working on focusing on getting back. I used to read Thich Nhat Hanh's books, his books about walking meditation. One of his books, the first book I found of his, is called Peace in Every Step. And it's basically, he's very famous for being one of those who brought mindfulness to the West. And that, like the idea that you don't have to sit for 30 minutes and go home and find, you know, perfect peace in order to meditate, that you can meditate anywhere at any time. And I had generalized anxiety disorder for years. And his, one of his ideas is like, say, you have an orange, that you focus the texture of the orange, the smell of the orange, how the orange, you know, where it came from, who helped grow the orange. And it helps focus your mind onto something else when you're in that hyped up, hyper adrenalized, hyper fear or, or anger or any of this. It's very hard to just go from that to a place of pure peace. You, you can't. You need the something so Thich Nhat Hanh's books um, have taught, gave me tools to learn what I could do when my anxiety was here and I was like vibrating at the level and I couldn't calm myself down, that he gave me tools in terms of what I can do immediately, even when I didn't have someplace quiet to go to to try to meditate. There are so many tools, but it's about, they're kind of like, we need to get our old toolbox out and we need to go to the library or we need to go to find more tools. We need to make sure that every day we aren't drinking poison and expecting something to happen to them right now. The justice will be done, period. End of, end of time. Justice will be done, both on earth and in their afterlife. We cannot wait and hold our, put our life on hold until they stay what we feel is what justice should be. We cannot um, allow our headspace. We can't allow them to take over our 90% of our headspace. We need to make sure that we take care of ourselves and our needs. If we're upset, we find a way to, to pray or talk about it, write, journal it, write it down and get it out. Sometimes I would write letters and then I'd burn them to release them. Um, safely outside or something. Um, you could light candles, you could put music on, you could take a long bath, you could read a book, um, watch kitty videos, do some crafts, take a walk. We need to make sure that we put our mental and physical health first. Self-care has to be number one. 
even if Trump were to be locked up tomorrow, it wouldn't solve everything that's getting us upset. So we can't wait on justice to be done before we feel better. Because it won't, we won't feel better even when it's done. It, it's not going to fix it. Um, we can make our voice heard. We can communicate to our representatives. But make sure we don't go down that. You know, sometimes I, I know signs where I'll start to spiral when I get depressed. And the more I spiral, the lower, I, more depressed I get, the less I reach out, the less I can even call someone and say I'm having trouble. So if you understand when what your symptoms are when you're starting to get stressed um like you're a little bit more short-tempered or you get uh, tension migraines or maybe that you're just more irritable than you normally are or maybe you know you said something a little more curtly to your child or spouse or friend than you would have and you're not acting yourself or you're getting impatient in traffic these are all signs that we're starting to our our brain is kind of switching gears we need to be able to recognize those signs and then say, what can I do to get myself back to a place where I'm taking care of myself and my needs? Um, they're saying leave the justice to them and that not only will Trump and the administration and you know everyone that's, that's involved in all these things, they will see justice in this world, in this world and in this time you know, within five years, when we're talking about all the different people involved, within five years, justice will be done. And Trump will not be president. He will not be able to run for president for 2020. We do not have to wait 10 years for something to be done. It will be done within two years for most of them and five years for, you know, the peripheral people, etc. Thank you. But we can't put our life on hold until that happens. We need to make sure that we put our emotional spiritual and mental health first and that we need to be able to support each other because all of us are going through it feels like PTSD almost and we're volunteering ourselves into feeding more of it making it worse and it's like watching the same topic in three or four different videos from four or five different news sources and it's not um, helping us we need to be able to support each other and have a place where we can encourage each other. I just started a Facebook group. Um, there's an Intuitive Celt channel Facebook that I hadn't really done anything about, but I made a Facebook, an Intuitive Celt group on Facebook so that you don't post to me, you post to each other. Everyone that's part of the group, um, you, you do have to request to join. I didn't want to make all the comments public, but I just started it. And Denise uh, is the first member, thank you. But it's there for everyone. I might not be able to check it every day. That's why I made it a group. Um, once you're approved, you talk amongst yourselves. You support each other. You can say, hey, I'm having a rough day or I'm really upset about this. I don't like what I see about that. And it's like, okay, well, then what can we do to support each other and encourage each other? And we can talk about things and we can disagree, but we need to be respectful and we need to be mindful that all of us, um, there's, again, this term, that my uncle used years ago and I love. It's called the walking wounded. All of us are walking wounded right now. And all of our nerves are on the outside and we're all, all of our nerves are on fire and we're so raw and we're at the brink of, of like our last straw. And we've been in this heightened place for so long that it feels discouraging and agitating and depressing and hopeless and, and, just everything is at once and it's overwhelming and we need to make sure that there are things that we can do to take care of ourselves things that we can do to get ourselves out of this headspace um, again crafts hobbies uh, exercise walking uh, watching cat videos but then also that we can reach out to people who understand and who would support and encourage us um, I have the last year or so found a therapist that I haven't gone in years but now I'm very happy that I have a therapist I need I think everyone should have someone that they can talk to that a therapist especially has the tools and has knowledge on how to deal with things that maybe you didn't have know about that tool or this um, but also friends networking communicating family and friends in real life and online I don't have a friend group here. I haven't met anyone locally except actors. 
I've been here since 2014, and I don't have a single friend in my city. I can't leave. I can't drive anywhere. Um, so it's been isolating, to say the least. And it's been very challenging. I had amazing friends where I lived in Virginia Beach, one of whom is like a sister to me. And it hurts. I miss them. And it's hard because I don't have the energy to type or email a lot. And uh, anyway, we need these communications. We need these connections with real people. And when some people sometimes growing up, I wasn't like the rest of my family. My family were very intellectual, brilliant, amazing, kind, good people. But I was so, no one was like me. I could hear and feel things. And no one knew what that was. They, they didn't understand it. And I was sensitive to everything. And I would try, try, try. But I couldn't quite get good enough. And I was just, it sucked. So I grew up in a family that wasn't like me. They did nothing wrong. They're good people. But I didn't feel like anyone understood. And it took a long time before I found some friends who did understand. And it took even longer for me to figure out who I was and what I needed and how what I needed was different than other people in order to to work and, and whatever. <clears throat> we need to make sure that we have outlets for self-care for ourselves, that we have support systems of friends, family, therapists, um, community groups, going uh, to the library group, going to join a book club, going to join a um, Panera to meet with people that might want to talk about positivity or something. We need to make sure that we take care of these things first. Um, they're saying like justice doesn't even matter because we'll still we'll be locking ourselves in prison by letting this take over and that even if Trump's in prison next to us we're still in the prison ourselves like we put ourselves in there and they don't want to see that. They don't want to see all of us hurting ourselves because we're so focused on we want something done. They're saying it will be done. But because we're feeding ourselves this poison, we're watching all this news and reading everything that we can get. Because when you're scared, you want information. But that information just fuels the, the fear. And it's this horrible cycle. And it's really hurt a lot of people. And right now, really good, good people are being short-tempered and saying things that might not be very polite. And we, these are people that agree on 99% of things and might just disagree on one small thing, but they're focused on that one small thing and they're not being nice to each other about it. It's like, it's easy to see once you can kind of understand everyone's at their, at their breaking point, but it's not helping anyone. And we don't, we, this group of people wouldn't hurt anyone. I know that we're good people, but I also know that when everyone is at their, you know, breaking point, we aren't the best of ourselves <clears throat> and they want to make sure that we don't suffer, you know, stress illness or suffer a mental or emotional stress because of what other people are doing, that justice will be done, that things will be repaired. The clock will go, backwards to undo things that were done and then people you know all these prison doors will be closed these people will be held to um not just a judge but like held in a public square where they will hear us talking about like no 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 they will be held accountable but when that day comes it'll feel good for a day or two but then what what are we going to do to get on to fix it or to change it so they're saying it's like, don't focus so much on the, oh, I can't wait till the day that, that you know, Trump or, or Lindsey Graham or McConnell's behind bars. That, that day will be good. No, it won't, because the same problems will exist. We'll still need issues with why our teachers aren't being paid what they deserve. We'll still have income inequality. We'll still have, you know, this, um, you know, birth to prison um, road for a majority of minorities. We're still going to have class division and wealth distribution issues. These issues, all of them, are going to be coming up in the next five plus years. We will be repairing all of this, but we can't sit and get ourselves worked up and then try to 
say like it's going to be better when when that happens then everything's going to be okay it's like no we have a lot more work to do so we need to focus on what we can do to speak our voice make our voice heard resist bot or go online and email them or contact them call them representatives or you know local state federal but also to make sure that we leave that like 10 minutes put that 10 minutes away and then focus on our mental health, focus on meditation, breathing, um, getting sleep. The steroids, I have not gone to bed before the sunrise this whole week. I wake up thinking it's 10, 9 or 10 a.m. and it's 4 p.m. and then I can't sleep until 6 a.m. again. I haven't. And then having the caregiver that's supposed to be here four days this week, she was here one day for two hours and I didn't get anything done and I still haven't gotten everything that could go wrong this week did. And I had a really, really rough few days. And I was about emotionally gonna collapse the other day. And I had it up to here and I was really upset. And during our daily calls, my mom really helped. And I needed someone to help me get out of that circle. And I think all of us are in where we're so close to being at that breaking point that we are um, we're getting stuck and then we're not ourselves. And I know that when I was upset and I was um, discouraged, I didn't feel like myself. I felt like this thing, this anxiety, this, this agitation, this, this not being happy with the way something was working out, that was taking over and I couldn't be peaceful and enjoy our prayer together and enjoy our talk and talk about sewing or whatever. Um, We need to take ownership. We need to take our day-to-day life back. And we need to make sure that what we do is put our, our personal, mental, physical, and spiritual health first. And then we need to make sure that we have outlets, that we have communication with other people, that we have support. And that we know that our voice matters, but that we have to put our energy toward things that are going to make sure that we're f- our energy for ourselves comes first. And that things will be okay. Justice will be done. We will see it in the next two, five years with all these different things. But we can't put our life on hold and we can't let them hold us hostage, our, hold our, our emotions. It's like all of them are we're allowing them to hold us hostage. And it's easy to understand how we got here. And it's easy to understand how everyone can feel like this because it's it's not just, it's not right. Things should have been done. But they're trying to make sure that we focus on ourselves and to not let, um, to not let, you know, Trump's doings or not doings or whatever take, to not allow that to take over our our life and take over our emotions and take over our our levels of stress and cortisol and everything so i'm going to be renting from the libraries the books that i read from t not han um piece of in every step was the first one i read but he has several um living buddha living christ is a pretty uh, big one and um he, he has dozens of books and then Marion Williamson is an excellent author. Um, in fact, I think she's running for president, which I didn't realize that was her. Um, Louise, Louise Hay has an excellent book on Heal Your Life and Heal Your Body. Um, there are amazing resources out there. And if you believe in the Bible, great. If you don't, there's Daily Om, O-M, um, will email you like a daily little meditation or or um, it's not like a prayer, but it's just something to think about. And then I get an email every day that's called Shift Happens, S-H-I-F-T, Shift Happens. And then I also get an email every day from the universe, tut.com, T-U-T dot com. We need to have prompts so that we set it up so it's already there. It's already going to remind us to take a few minutes to breathe. Um, There's an a couple apps on all versions of phones that will show like a bubble slowly expanding for five seconds, holding it and then slowly, you know, collapsing. There's a lot of meditation apps. Uh, I've been listening to 
guided meditation to go to sleep if and when I've been sleeping. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. We need to make sure that we put our personal health first and that because we're already going through this evolution and this shift, there's big change and it, we have all these growing pains. It's like the worst possible time. All these things are coming together at once that people are kind of opening up to their spiritual self more and be, they're becoming more empathic and more sensitive and that they're experiencing more of the world's pain, which is hard to, to, to feel that and not get upset. And then they're also ending up coming down with their own health issues or their own um, stress or, or, or depression, anxiety, etc. So it's not only that people are getting upset about all the um, history of corruption and history of way things have been being exposed and finally feeling like we can now, not only are we knowledgeable of it, but we can start seeing that things are happening because we're doing something about it. So not only is all this coming up into a forefront, but we're going through this big change and these growing pains and we're opening up into the more sensitive side. So we're more, even more reactive to what we see because we feel it even more deeply. So they're saying, leave justice to them. It's going to be done. Um, make sure that your voice is heard. They're not saying like, don't ever do anything. They, they want us to be involved. We have to be part of the solution when the day comes where we need to fix these issues. But make sure that you don't get lost in the rabbit hole of it. <clears throat> and make sure to put your mental health first. Um, so there are many excellent channels with regard to intuitives and psychics and um, tarot readers and I'd call them energy workers because that's kind of a term I, I think would apply. Um, people that I enjoy, there's lots more. I know I'm forgetting a lot of people. I wish I could do a comprehensive, but I just wrote down a few that, that I've watched in the last couple of days. Um, Psychic Violetta, David Johnson, Linda G, Lena Rodriguez, Rosie Psychic Investigator, Reading Light Tarot, Revealing Light Tarot, Readings by the Empress, Whimsy, and Milo, or Milo, I'm not sure. And there's dozens of others. Um, and also, recently I watched a video by a woman named Amanda Ellis, or I, Ellis, I believe, and she did a video, this was a little while back, but about how people that are getting sick and like more and more people are seeing kind of physical stuff or whatever and that she mentioned from her angels that it was like inoculation toward this next evolution that's not the word she used but the word she did use was like inoculation like we're getting our booster shots for our next you know big change and it's interesting that I was getting information on how the humankind was evolving and we'd reach a new kind of level or whatever that we'd kind of have more uh, the veil between the worlds be lifted a little bit and how that will change our world. But she was gaining information on how we're kind of, um, we're changing. And because of what the world is going to be like, we're, we're getting like booster shots for it. So similar messages, not the same, but it's very interesting to see these parallels. And she calls on Archangels, Michael, and she calls on Christ Energy and Mary and it was very interesting. I hadn't really seen many of her videos before. So um, I was really excited to kind of see that video with, with similar information. It kind of makes me feel like I'm not crazy. I'm not making it all up. That it is me talking to, to guides and angels and not just, you know, sometimes when you get messages, you're like, am I crazy? It's part of, part of this whole thing. Anyway, so um, there are... <clears throat> more topics I want to talk about, of course. I have maybe at most an hour or two of energy each day on a good day this past week. One of those days I set up the Facebook group page. Um, another of those days I'm just trying to deal with the medical. And then another of those days I just did about, sewed two little blocks of fabric together. So I'm not exactly in a place where I'm setting up and sitting up and filming. I wish I could. Um, my health is, has, it's 
bad. And I don't want to go inpatient and get IV, fu IV antibiotics because I don't want to stay in the hospital for a week. And I don't want to, I feel that, I, that we're doing the most they can. And I'd rather sleep here and snuggle with my kitty cat than stay in a hospital. Um, but I do have a consultation scheduled with ear, nose, and throat, and that's going to be a few couple weeks. And the surgery might not even be until I'm better, and I don't know when that will be. And I have a, a follow-up with the pulmonologist. And, I mean, I have another two-plus weeks of antibiotics, and I have another week and a half of steroids. And they're doing everything they can, but my body, because the steroids try to kill everything that, is causing an issue, but the steroids also kill whatever immune system I have left. So my body doesn't have any energy. And um, with the fever, all the, you know, pureed fruit, frozen pops I can do or drink or anything, nothing is, is enough. And, and just trying to eat rice and oatmeal or whatever when I can, there's, there's not enough for me to energy, energy wise to do what I want to do. So but um, I, there are videos on McConnell that I have planned to do. There's um, gonna, a lot of topics that I do plan to do, and I am going to get to them. Um, I, since uh, after my first three videos or so, um, I was really, really shy in the beginning. I didn't really keep up with it. But after my first three videos, I've done a video every single week, um, maybe within seven to ten days, maybe not every seven, but every week. And there's been some weeks that I've been able to do three or four or even five. But no matter what, even as you can hear, I am doing once a week no matter what. I want to be able to try to share something with you guys every week. Last week's with our 25-minute video, it took nine hours to upload to YouTube. Um, YouTube's been having issues. And mo most of the time with my other videos, uh, I would try to edit out some of the ums and ahs and the Times I repeat the same thing, and then I would upload it to YouTube, and it'd take a few hours. But this last time, I didn't do anything because I didn't have energy, but it took nine hours to upload to YouTube. So I am doing what I can. I want to share, and I want to be more engaged with you guys. Right now, I can commit to once a week, and I appreciate your patience. Um, and that's why I wanted to bring in the names of these other channels that are amazing, and the people there in the comments, you know, are supportive, but their message, the people, these channels, their messages are good. And it's like if Violetta, David Johnson, there's so many, but they are good people, excellent. And there's so much content available. So if you feel like you need a booster shot of positive energy or something, these channels and more are good. And if you have suggestions, please add them as always, add them in the comments. And then the Facebook group, is intuitive Celt group um, and it's once you get approved then you can talk amongst each other I wanted to set it up that way in case I couldn't you know check in every day um, there is a Twitter I haven't really done anything with I haven't been online a lot but I wanted a place where I YouTube wouldn't let me start up a community tab where I could post updates uh, like text updates on YouTube as I'm too small but there wanted to be a place where everyone could talk amongst themselves and share and encourage each other. So although I don't love Facebook, I don't know, I think a lot of people don't love Facebook or Twitter right now, but it was a place where I found that I could at least create a space where everyone can come together and encourage and support each other and debate or, or discuss topics, but in a respectful way and in a way where we're like, okay, I agree to disagree or you know, this or that, but making sure that the primary source, their whole thing about this channel and this everything is about bringing hope and peace in times of like this, in times of strife. And that's what everything is about. And that's what I'm trying to make sure as a vessel for them. So what I'm trying to make sure that I offer to you guys. And this group, this Facebook group, Intuitive Celt group, is meant to be a place where you can go and share hope and get hope and peace and find peace and share peace, share messages, share, um, you know, books, share YouTube channels, cat videos, you know, whatever it is that brings a smile. Um, and I, I hope that 
you guys know it will it's going to be okay justice will be done and that we need to make sure we put our own needs first and then um we we will be part of the solution but right now it's like we're we're spinning in place and we're hurting ourselves and they're worried about all of us because they see the stress and they want to make sure that we put our our spiritual mental and emotional health first and physical health and then we can speak up and make sure our voice is heard we need to do that but to not spend hours going down the rabbit hole and getting lost. So, um, thank you for watching. I hope this doesn't take another nine hours to upload. <laughs> um, I will see you within the week. I'm hoping that I might be able to do uh, some topics that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but we'll see how it goes. And until then, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like if you like this, share it with friends or whatnot, you can email it, whatever. Um, but I would love if you would comment other things that bring you joy, you know, videos or topics, books, authors, um, TV shows uh, and exercise, um, whatever, what makes you smile? What do you do when you need a little lift? I would love to hear about that. So thank you for joining. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening and know it's, it's going to be okay. Justice will be done. Um, just focus on self-care. That's the number one message. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Blessed be. Bye-bye.